Well, hello and welcome to World War II Part 20. Uh, before I get going, okay, I'm more events in 1941, okay, following on from my conclusion of Barbarossa, Typhoon and the Soviet Winter Counter-Offensive. Uh, just a bit of a notification, really, on future um, breakdown of the war. Now, because the war is going to spread to so many theatres, and by the end of 1941, of course, one of the war's biggest theatres will open in the Pacific properly. Uh, I say properly because there's already been rumblings and things going on there, like in China um, and other things going on. Um, what I will do from the start of 1942 is I will cover in 1942 the Eastern Front, so I'll start off with the disastrous Soviet um, spring offensive after the thaw, um, and then Case Blue, okay, the German um, plan for 1942, the spring and summer campaign, um, ending, of course, um, covering the Battle of Stalingrad up to end of year. And then what I will do is, okay, in 1942, those, the, there will be um, two or three parts covering the Eastern Front, and then what I'll do is go back, okay, and do two or three parts to cover um, the Pacific Front, um, and then I'll do other parts um you know covering other theaters north africa and other areas so the aim of that basically um each title of each video will say like world war ii part so and so but then it'll say russia 1942 part one russia 1942 part three um pacific 1942 part one pacific 1942 part two three four etc um so i'll just change it up so people can follow where i am and what's going on so let us continue okay let us continue now we've covered right up to the um um basic stopping of hostilities um in early 1942 on the eastern front uh, so now we're going back in time i covered a bit of this okay at the end of the last video after concluding um the first nine months of the war on the eastern front and the brutality and savagery of that campaign okay and the successes and failures let us now continue through 1941 so basically on July 25th, okay, during the night of July 25th, an Italian assault vessel um, crew tries to enter the harbour at Valletta in Malta with explosives um, and piloted torpedoes, okay, known as pigs. Now they are spotted before they, they can line up on the targets and of the 33 men, 15 are killed and 18 are taken prisoner. So the latest um, failure of the Italian military um, to do anything major. Now due to rising tensions between Japan and the USA, Japan uh, Japanese assets in the UK and USA are frozen. And the following day, okay, um, the US government puts the headquarters of the Hawaii sector on alert. Uh, General Douglas MacArthur um, takes over his new command of American forces in Far East um, and of fo American forces in the Philippines, okay, uh, where obviously MacArthur will face off against the Japanese um, soon enough. Now, Canada, okay, renounces its trade treaty with Japan, so Canada has now broken trade with Japan. And meanwhile, Japan counters by freezing um, all American assets in Japanese territories. So the war preparation is already building up there, okay? Now in North Africa, okay, there's a lot of swapping changing going on. General um, Bastico, okay, takes over from General Garibaldi as Commander-in-Chief of Italian troops um, in North Africa. And Germans finally, after a number of weeks, launch a severe air raid on London, England. You know, on July 28th as well, another ominous little move by the Japanese. Japanese troops officially land in Indochina. Um, and by the next day, you know, the Japanese have occupied um, Indochina from the Vichy French. And pretty much the French cannot really do anything about it. They don't have any sufficient forces in the area um, to even resist the Japanese. At the end of July, OK, President Roosevelt's counsellor, uh, Harry Hopkins, is in Moscow to discuss the dispatch of help to the USSR. And meanwhile, another little Japanese-American spat, OK, at Ch uh, Cheung King. OK, um, the American river gunboat, Tatulia, um, is bombed by Japanese aircraft. Now, the next day, the Japanese government um, apologizes to America for the incident. Japan makes out that it was mistaken identity and they didn't mean um, to bomb um, an American river gunboat. So, <laughs> little moves going on now between the Americans, Japanese, um, and others. Meanwhile, in North Africa, at the start of August, artillery is still dueling in the Tobruk sector, okay, which has been under siege for some time. Um, and in the USA, meanwhile, a council for economic defense. 
defences set up, probably in reaction to the Japanese freezing American assets. So obviously the Americans now countering that. And on 5th of August, okay, another development for the building um, of what will become the Pacific War. Um, Allied reinforcements arrive in Singapore. Uh, meanwhile, Japan, okay, denies aggressive designs against Thailand. Um, so there's a lot of political machinations and movements going on in Pacific. Bruno Mussolini, meanwhile, second Sunni Italian leader, dies in an air accident near Pisa um, on August 7th. And on August 8th, okay, uh, Japanese ambassador, um, Admiral Nomura, proposes there should be direct talks, okay, between American president and the Japanese prime minister to reach agreement um, on the differences between the America, uh, the United States and Japan. Now, meanwhile, okay, on the 9th of August, um, we have meeting in Placentia Bay, Newfoundland. Uh, Churchill, accompanied by his Imperial um, of General Staff, Sir John Dill, and the First Sea Lord, Sir Dudley Pound, um, who arrives on the new battleship Prince of Wales. Uh, Roosevelt, meanwhile, with his advisors, have come in the cruiser Augusta, and the next day after a religious service on board Prince of Wales, sees the opening of the Atlantic Conference, okay, in which principles of the Atlantic Charter are uh, uh, basically laid down, defining in the war aims of the democracies involved. Now, Churchill presses um, Roosevelt um, to try and bring America into the war, and he does receive a guarantee from Roosevelt of US intervention in the event of any Japanese attack on Malaya, Singapore, and the Dutch East Indies, of course, some of those areas very rich in oil reserves. Um, and due to a little trade war with America um, and problems going back well into mid 30s, um, Japan is feeling the pinch of resources, I'll just say. I may do a separate video on that after I've covered the war, but certainly I think America was partial. Japan was partially forced to attack America because America was really turning a huge diplomatic uh, and economic screw on Japan and had been doing for years. Now, the two statesmen also agree on um, a reply to the Japanese proposals, okay? Um, they ask for neutralization of Thailand and French Indochina, and at the same time, okay, Tokyo is given a stern warning, okay? Basically from the Americans that any further Japanese expansion um, could lead to a situation in which government of the US would see itself obliged to take countermeasures, even if that leads to a general war. The statesmen have no illusions about Japanese intentions, however. The conference goes on for a few more days. Meanwhile, also into early August, more political machinations, Britain and the USSR promise Turkey um, and assure them um, that if they are attacked, they will receive assistance from both countries. Meanwhile, the Luftwaffe launches a heavy raid on Moscow. Also, another little kind of political wrangling, okay, in Cuba, Chile, Argentina and a few areas, there have been signs, okay, especially in the Latin American countries, um, of considerable pro-Nazi agitation. So those areas now have Nazi groups, okay, and they're starting to cause trouble um, for local governments throughout. So, you know, the German Nazi philosophy is spreading to other parts of the world and causing problems. Now, okay, on 12th of August, um, Admiral Darlan is appointed Vichy Minister of National Defence um, and the head of the newly formed Ministry of National um, and Empire Defence. Now, Marshal Pétain announces the adoption of a series of totalitarian measures, including the suppression of all political parties, the setting up of special courts, the reorganisation of the economy on cooperative lines and the doubling of the police force. So already Marshal Patan, probably with his hand turned by the Nazis, is bringing in further controls of freedom of speech and all of the kinds of not very nice and friendly laws, I'll just say. Meanwhile, OK, on August 14th at 3pm, Mr. Attlee broadcast news of the Church of Roosevelt meeting at sea and the Atlantic Charter Declaration. Uh, meanwhile, um, Stalin receives a message from Churchill and Roosevelt proposing a joint meeting in Moscow. Now, basically the following day, August 16th, Stalin broadcasts his acceptance, his acceptance of such a meeting between himself, Roosevelt um, and Churchill. Obviously, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Meanwhile, OK, British Air Raids on Catania um, and Syracuse. Now in Catania, um, according to Italian sources, there are nearly 50 casualties from those um, air raids. And meanwhile, British and Soviet governments send a protest note about German infiltration of Iran, obviously another very rich oil area.
Now, the U.S. President and Secretary of State um, tells the Japanese ambassador the condition that the United States consider indispensable if talks are to be resumed, leading to a possible Pacific conference. Meanwhile, Churchill returns to England uh, before the end of August and the British launch more air raids on Sicily, this time on um, Augusta. So there's lots of political wranglings and going around, going on. There's a lot of um, things going on for sure. Now, on August 22nd, okay, a German officer is killed in Paris. Now, the signal for the beginning of active resistance to the occupying forces and the collaborationist Vichy authorities. So the um, resistance in France is now officially launched and they have taken their first German life. Now, in Iran, okay, on August 25th, um, British and Soviet troops both enter Iran. The British and Soviet ambassadors in Tehran present an ultimatum to the Iranian government requiring them to accept the protection of the Allies. This is due to concerns that Germans are infiltrating Iran. In concerted movements, Soviet troops from north meet directly for capital, while the British coming up from Persian Gulf in Iraq occupy the Abadan oil fields. Now, Shah Reza Pahlavi's uh, protests against the Allied aggression doesn't really go anywhere. Amongst other things, this action by Allies um, as the effect of reinforcing um, Turkish determination to remain neutral um, despite the Axis powers earlier offers for Turkey to join the war and open another front in southern Russia. Now an Anglo-Canadian Norwegian commando unit land at the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen in the Arctic Ocean and destroys mineral deposits and installations that are being used by the Germans. Um, you know many raids like this went on during war and those guys don't always get their full shout out. You know, but yeah, these certainly a lot of actions like that went on, and every little pinprick to hurt the enemy. You know, when a dartboard, it's an old saying, when a dartboard has one hole, it just has one hole, but when it's got 500 holes, it's in a mess. You have to keep pricking the enemy all the time. Now, in Iran, okay, British troops occupy um, oil installations at Abadan, and in Iran, a new government is formed and asks for an armistice with allies, okay, on August 27th. Now, this treaty by which British and Russians will station troops um, at strategic points in country but not in the capital is signed on August 28th now the Allies purpose in occupying Iran is to protect themselves in advance against a possible um, German pincer movement um, through Egypt and Syria although the Germans are stuck in North Africa and despite some successes here or there over the next 18 months they're really going nowhere now, the Japanese government, meanwhile, protests in Washington against repeated violation of Japanese territorial waters by American ships carrying aid to the Russian port of Vladivostok. Now, French patriot Paul Collette fires four shots during the ceremony at Versailles, wounding Pierre Laval, vice president of the council in the Vichy government, and Marcel Diat. Now, an enthusiastic collaborator and director at German controlled newspaper um, Le Ouvre, uh, many arrests and executions of so called communists follow this incident. So this is again further sign the French resistance is indeed, um, you know, building up. So meanwhile in Iran all hostilities cease at the end of August. Okay, in Yugoslavia General Milan Nedic allows himself to be nominated as head of a puppet government set up by the Germans in Serbia. Now, the RAF at the end of August launched a huge air raid on Bremen, um, causing much damage. So, the air war, the air raids are continuing, okay? There's lots of political manoeuvrings in the Middle East, especially in the Pacific. Um, clearly now, Japan and America are becoming way more hostile to each other, um, which, of course, will culminate um, in a special video edition I'll do called The Day of Infamy, the day that will live in infamy. So RDF daylight raids at the start of September over northern France, the channel and occupied territory in Europe commence. Now in Japan, an air defence bureau is formed um, to advise on air raid precautions um, throughout the country. But for the time being, Japan will suffer no real threat of that. In the Atlantic, OK, early September, the US destroyer Greer reports that she's been attacked by a German submarine. That's an ominous move, 175 miles southwest of the Icelandic coast. So an American ship reports a German sub... Um, um, has um, attacked them and fired on them. Now, Mr. Mackenzie King, okay, Canadian Prime Minister, speaks um, at the Mansion House in London um, where he states, We in Canada cannot all share your dangers, but we are proud to share your burdens. We are determined to share them to the utmost of our strength. Meanwhile, another day, okay, on 5th September, Gurkha and Sp Scottish troops arrive in Malaya to strengthen defences. So some Scottish regiment and the famous Gurkhas now start to arrive in Malaya to strengthen defences there. 
So everything is building up in the Pacific, as you can see. Mediterranean, the US merchant ship um, Seafarer, Steel Seafarer, is sunk by German aircraft in the Gulf of Suez. So that's another American ship, okay, being attacked by the Germans. Now, okay, on this day, September 7th, the heaviest air raid on Berlin yet. A two hour attack um, by a huge area of bomber force, including four engine Sterlings and Halifaxes. Um, the attack was made on the anniversary of the first German mass attack attack on London. So that is the British and Churchill hitting back at Hitler for the first massed attack on London on September 7th, 1940. So they repay the favour and launch a huge two-hour attack um, on Germany. <laughs> no doubt that will have hurt Hitler's pride, no doubt. Now, okay, in Paris, following the recent outbreak of French resistance, um, serious disturbances are reported in Paris, leading to the arrest of some 120 hostages. Okay, so in Paris now it's getting very severe uh, and in France the resistance is kicking off but the Germans and Vichy government are replying. Now the British launch an air raid on Reggio, Calabria and Messina. Now these attacks on Sicily have become almost daily occurrences and the Italians can do very little to check them. And further anti-Nazi measures okay, are taken in Chile and Argentina um, in early September to stop any potential Nazi party rising into power there. So following the attack, okay, on the US destroyer Greer on September 4th, President Roosevelt gives his order, shoot first. Roosevelt orders his ships to shoot first to all ships patrolling security zone. In effect, President Roosevelt is ordering American Navy to attack any ships that threaten the free passage of US merchant ships and ships with US escorts. So Roosevelt there, you know, he's had a... a one ship attacked by a destroyer, attacked by a submarine. Then he's had a merchant ship um, sunk. You know, it is starting to affect America. So now Roosevelt said, I've had enough. You fire first. Don't even wait. Now in Norway, okay, um, Quisling um, government bans Boy Scout and other youth organizations. Okay, all boys over nine years old are obliged to join the National Socialist Youth Organization. So Boy Scouts and all these things are all cancelled and boys over nine have to join a National Socialist Nazi Boy Scout party, so to speak. Uh, yeah, Vidkun Quisling, uh, you know, the Nazi collaborator in Norway. <laughs> oh, dear me. So, in Iran, okay, in contravention of armistice terms, the Allies occupy the capital, Tehran. Now, the Shah abdicates in protest um, in favour of his son, uh, Mohammad Reza Shah, who succeeds to the throne the next day. Also, okay, in early Sept mid September, sorry, the US Marine Department announces the Atlantic Fleet will protect convoys of materials to those countries, okay, affected by the Lend Lease Act, um, up to 26 degrees um, west meridian. So basically, the American Navy will now start officially offering support to Lend Lease supply convoys, okay, um, within certain areas. Um, of influence. On 18th September, President Roosevelt asks the American Congress for an additional nearly six um, billion um, dollars for lend lease supplies, okay, to fund more equipment going to um, the people who require it, like the Soviet Union, Britain, amongst others. On September 20th, okay, Germans impose a 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew in Paris. This is like to try and count a recent rise of French um, resistance activities. And, the, you know, the Comet National Francais is set up in London with General de Gaulle at its head. So, okay, toward end of September, we have a large convoy, okay, leaving Gibraltar, heading to Malta, escorted by a powerful naval force under command of Admiral Somerville. Um, the escort includes three battleships, the Nelson, the Rodney and the Prince of Wales, of course, um, back from its um, excursion to set up the Atlantic Conference in Newfoundland. Uh, five cruisers, 18 destroyers and the uh, um, aircraft carrier Ark Royal. Uh, the operation is codenamed Halberd. So basically, they're saying, you know, we want these supplies to get to Malta. We are sending a huge naval fleet to protect them. So 15 governments, okay, including governments in exile, adhere to the Atlantic Charter, drawn up by Churchill and Roosevelt at their conference in waters off Newfoundland. Um, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Czechoslovakia, France, Britain, Greece, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, South Africa, the USSR, and Yugoslavia um, all sign off on the Atlantic Conference findings. Now, on September 26th, okay, US Naval Command orders the protection of all ships sailing in US defensive waters and the shadowing and, where possible, sinking 
of every Italian and German ship found in those waters. So the US Naval Command is now saying, no, you don't fire first. You just The intention is now to sink any Italian or German ships within the zone, within the uh, protection zone that they set up earlier in the war after the outbreak of the U-boat attacks. So the Americans, you know, approaching the end of September, they are getting way more hostile. They're now starting to even act before things have become a problem, you know. Now, in Mediterranean, an Italian S-84 aircraft, okay, of 36 Squadron, hits the battleship Nelson with a torpedo but causes no serious damage. Uh, the Nelson is one of ships, of course, one of three battleships um, escorting the convoy that left Gibraltar for Malta. Um, you know, the Italian have attacked them but have failed to sink. Now, unrest and repressive measures reported from Bohemia uh, where Himmler's deputy Reinhard Heydrich, okay, the Aryan racist um, <sighs> Reidrich, evil man, has been appointed um, in place of the less rigid von Neurath. Basically, he's the Reich protectorate um, for that area, and what a horrible uh, protectorate head to have. Now, in the Baltimore Naval Dockyard in the USSA, the Patrick Henry is launched, okay, the first of the Liberty ships, a 10,000-ton merchantman of highly standardised design, of which thousands are to be built before the end of the war. This is all part for supplies, A, for possible future American um, interests, but also for the Lend-Lease um, equipment, and also to expand supplies and influence around the world. Now, in Malta, okay, the British convoy, Operation Halberd, reaches Malta, now almost totally intact and lands 50,000 tons of supplies. Now being at the end of September 1941 these supplies are enough to last Malta until next summer. So the British took a huge risk of okay, sending such a large naval flotilla a big target but they wanted to guarantee those supplies have got through and now they have. Malta doesn't need any supplies um, for about 8 or 9 months. Okay, So an incredible um, success there for um, the British now, two British night fighters, okay, sink the Italian submarine Adua in the Mediterranean. So basically, okay, between June and uh, end of September, the Italians and Germans have lost nearly 300,000 tonnes um, of merchant shipping. And at the start of October 1941, okay, the end of the Moscow conference between the Soviet Union, Britain, the USSA, okay, which uh, one of the main features was the Lend-Lease supplies and equipment um, to the USSR, um, you know, in reaction to the German attack. So in an interview, okay, Mahatma Gandhi um, incites all of the subject peoples of the British Empire to passive resistance. Now, I respect and admire Mahatma Gandhi. Um, he was a great man, but passive resistance against the Japanese and Germans would not have worked. You know, we have to be real. I, I really respect Mahatma Gandhi uh, for the man he was, but you cannot take a passive resistance against the Nazi regime or the Italian Nazi regime. They will roll over you and punish you cruelly for it. So the breakdown of the Anglo-German negotiations on exchange of seriously ill and wounded prisoners of war, you know, also has gone on. Now, okay, there's a referendum in Luxembourg on October 10th organised by the pro-Nazi party on the annexation of their country um, to Germany, but it does not have the results its promoters look for and thus the motion fails. So a little pocket of success in mainland Europe, although the Germans have occupied you know, pretty much Luxembourg anyway, so it's irrelevant at the same time. Meanwhile, Nuremberg is subjected to a huge um, aerial bombardment by the RDF on October 12th. Now, in Poland on October 15th, okay, a very ominous day in Poland, okay, the death penalty is prescribed for all Jews found outside the ghettos. You know, I would discuss more, um, you know, the um, Holocaust performed against the Jews, but just in case any Jewish people are listening, I do not wish to bring back any haunting memories that you may have regarding your grandparents or other other persons, other family members. So that's why I'm steering clear of that. I'm fully aware it went on um, and it was probably the most evil thing in human history. Um, but I just don't want to upset anyone listening. So in the Atlantic, OK, the US destroyer Kearney is torpedoed by a U-boat northwest of Iceland. So again, another American ship. We've had the American destroyer Greer. We've had the US merchantman. And now we've got another US destroyer. Um, you know, this is the second US destroyer in a month that has been attacked by a German U-boat. So, you know, the Americans are getting more 
The Americans are getting more, you know, um, aggressive, but it is in direct response um, to a whole number of their ships being attacked. But also, because Roosevelt and the U.S. Naval Commanders give orders that American ships are to fire first, U-boats now have kind of no choice but to fire because, you know, with the U.S. Naval Command orders, any U-boat has to assume the American ship will automatically attack them on site, okay? So, it's a two-way street. So, General Tojo, okay, reports to the Japanese War Office, and I quote, Japan stands at the crossroads of its rise or fall. Ominous words there. Now, there is an assassination, okay, on the 20th of October of Lieutenant Colonel Hotz, okay, the Nazi military commander of the Nantes region. So, the French resistance are definitely at work again. Now, in retaliation um, to that assassination, the next day, 50 hostages are shot at Nantes by the Nazis as a reprisal uh, for assassination of Lieutenant uh, Colonel Hotz. Now, on October 22nd, okay, Tokyo has its first blackout uh, while they perform air defense exercises. Um, it follows for a number of days, but the Japanese are now putting plans in place to test their, um, you know, air defense, night air attack defense systems. So everything is gearing up to war in the Pacific, of course, which at the start of December will take an ominous evil turn. So Malta, okay, yet another Italian air raid on Highland in uh, Micaba Airfield um, and the airport installations at Valletta. Meanwhile, in North Africa, British bombers raid Benghazi. Um, and Tripoli. So in North Africa, it's been very quiet, okay? Um, things do kick off, though, um, once again, but it's been very quiet for now. Uh, you know, the Tobruk sector artillery exchanges... You know, some odd sparring here or there, but no major offensive at the moment. So the British Parliament debates questions of aid to Russia, OK? Some members raise questions of whether Britain is giving sufficient um, support to our allies. Some people are criticising British government, saying we're not giving the Russians enough, they need more. Now, frankly, in terms of tanks, OK, that is not much good because, you know, the you know untold truth is that Russian tanks now are way superior to British tanks. Um, so generally when the Russians got us tanks, they were used for like safe zones, uh, rear guard defense regions, things like that. They, they weren't used in the main front line. You know, the, the KVs and the T-34s obviously were the main battle tank and were far superior to British tanks at the time. But all that aid did help because it allowed the Russians to be able to pull tank forces from some areas, put them in combat theaters, you know, while using the British tanks to maintain garrisons elsewhere in quieter sectors. The RAF on 26th of October launches a heavy night attack on Hamburg. Um, and on 27th of October, formation of a gendarme Arc Légion in France to fight with the Germans in Russia is reported. So now Germans are taking volunteers in France to join the Great Crusade against Bolshevism. Now on October 29th, okay, um, a, the Germans launch an air attack on Moscow and during the afternoon, British bombers carry out raids on provinces of Reggio Calabria um, and Catanzaro um, in Italy. So these moves are definitely proceeding, okay, to the Japanese coming into the war. Like I said, in, in Mediterranean and North Africa, it's fairly quiet. Certain things going on, but not much. In Atlantic, the U.S. destroyer Reuben James is torpedoed by a U-boat and sinks in the waters um, west of Iceland. There are over 100 dead, okay? And the U.S. destroyer Reuben James is officially the first U.S. vessel to be sunk um, by enemy action in Second World War. It's the first US warship to be sunk um, in the Second World War. Now, that is not going to go down well in America, okay? Now, the next day, okay, in the United States, the US um, Coast Guard is placed under the jurisdiction of the military authorities. Meanwhile, the RAF, okay, uh, launched daylight offensives over northern France, the Channel and Occupied Territory um, in Europe, and these attacks go on for some time. Um, early November, British um, air raids continue on Sicily. Places between Syracuse and Licata are attacked multiple times. Now, on 5th of November, okay, the Japanese send uh, Sabura Kasura to Washington as a special representative to try heal the breach between the Japanese and the Americans uh, but they're only throwing dust in Americans eyes all their plans are already made uh, which we will go through the build-up and the attack on Pearl Harbor of course 
So basically, okay, um, the war is kind of, except for the Eastern Front, is kind of in a lull. There's moves in the Pacific. There's jousting in North Africa and Mediterranean. There's jousting in Atlantic. Okay, there's there's things going on. Uh, but mainly the Eastern Front is the major theatre of war at the moment. Heavy air raids on Brindisi, Brindisi um, take place on November 7th. And the RAF launch a huge night raid on Berlin, Cologne and Mannheim in the heaviest RAF offensive at war. Um, the RAF send over 300 planes but do lose 37 planes much of which was to the adverse weather conditions. Now, in light of US decision to arm their merchant ships, the German government gives notice that U-boats will be ordered to torpedo all armed ships. So you see, everything the Americans do... It has to escalate what the Germans do. When the Americans say, right, we have this exclusion zone, okay, German ships coming in will be seized, boarded, turned back. Um, when the Americans say, right, now we're arming all those merchantmen that are escorting these supplies to the enemy of Germany, Britain, you know, everything escalates what the Germans have to do in response. Even though the Americans are not at fault, you know, this is often what happens in war. So... Now, a euphoric speech by Hitler in, in Munich, the Führer exaggerates um, the enemy's losses even more than Stalin did, and he claims that the USSR has lost 10 million men um, in killed, wounded, and prisoners as well. Okay, as well as 60 to 75 percent of its industrial potential, which is not entirely true, and those casualties are overblown by November 1941, even though Soviet casualties have been disastrous. And Hitler quotes, however long the war may last, the last battalion in the field will be a German one. We are deciding the fate of Europe for the next thousand years. Well, actually, they do decide the fate of Europe for the next thousand years, but not in the way Hitler thinks. Now, on November 9th, okay, Yalta is occupied um, by the Germans. In the Mediterranean, 20 U-boats, okay, enter the Mediterranean. Now, this is partially due to also American supplies and ships in that area as well, um, as well as increased RDF activity um, and to counter the um, threat of the Royal Navy, which has a large presence in the Mediterranean. So the request at German High Command for support by German submarines was made by Rommel personally after a number of Italo Italian and German convoys sailing to Africa has been sunk. So Rommel wants the U-boats um, to help screen um, his convoys of supplies um, for protection. In the Atlantic, for the first time, American warships escort a convoy transporting troops, 20,000 Canadians, uh, leaving Halifax in Nova Scotia for the Far East. So the Americans are now shipping 20,000 Canadian troops to the Far East, another example of America's closeness to war. Winston Churchill, meanwhile, speaks in London at the Mansion House and he says, it, uh, Churchill quotes, if Japan makes war on the United States, Great Britain will support America within the hour. <laughs> Not surprised there. Now, Hitler and Himmler give authority for the study um, of the final solution at Jewish problem um, on November 11th. Another ominous evil event there. So basically, okay, we are nearing the point, okay, where the Japanese will formally enter the war. Um, I'll cover up to there first. The Vichy government orders for internment um, at Fort Protelet in the Pyrenees of Leon Blum um, and Edouard Daladier, former French Prime Ministers, and General Gamelin, okay, um, lately Commander in Chief at French Army. In Mediterranean, German U boat uh, U 81, commanded by Lieutenant Gunnerberger, torpedoes and severely damages the British aircraft carrier Ark Royal off Gibraltar. Another submarine seriously damages the battleship Malaya. So the U-boats have come into the Mediterranean and within a few days are already making an impact. Now in the Mediterranean at 2.15am, okay, a terrible fire breaks out in engine room at Ark Royal, um, putting the pumps out of action and at about 6 o'clock um, the Ark Royal sinks okay, from damage um, done by the torpedo attack. So British air raids on Catania and Brindisi and Acireale um, cause casualties and damage and the USA orders the evacuation of their marines from Shanghai, Peking and Tietzin. So more moves as we head to war in the Pacific, okay, um, which I will cover in a special Pearl Harbor event and then start of 1942 in 1942 as that new structure I've said, Eastern Front 1942 and the parts, one to whatever, you know, the other theatres, Europe. North Africa, Med, etc. in other parts and then the Pacific in other parts. Um, but each video will be dated on which part of that theatre for that year it is uh, so people can follow it. Naples is heavily bombed by the RAF on 17th of November. 
And on November 18th, okay, the British launched a second Western Desert Offensive. They have been building up time, things have been quiet, but the British 8th Army, okay, commanded by General Cunningham, launches Operation Crusader against the Italian and German forces surrounding Tobruk, okay. Now, the immediate aim of Operation Crusader is to reinforce the Tobruk bridgehead. The final objective is to recapture the whole of Cyrianica, um, and if successful, to invade Tripolitania. So the House of Representatives in Tokyo passes resolution expressing hostility to the United States of America. We are not far away now um, from there. On November 19th, OK, the British 8th Army advances without meeting any serious obstacles and reaches um, Sidi Rizag. Um, at Bear El Gubi. Hold on a second, I'll have a quick drink. My throat's going dry. So the Italian Ariete Division, okay, puts up stout resistance um, while on the right flank, okay, the 4th Armoured Brigade is involved in hard fighting um, with contingents of the German 20 uh, 21st Panzer Division. So Crusader has started. The British move on October 20th, okay, um, an armoured brigade from Bia um, El Gubi to Gaba Sala, okay, to meet the threat from the German tanks. The Japanese envoy, um, meanwhile, extraordinary to Washington, uh, Kirusa, uh, with Ambassador Nomura, puts forward his government's final proposals for resolution at crisis of relations between Japan and the United States. Now, the dismissal of General Weygand as Delegate General of Vichy, France, in North North Africa because of his non-cooperation with the Germans. So General Weygand has not been cooperating with Germans in North Africa, not following instructions, and therefore he has been dismissed. On October 22nd, okay, heavy fighting is taking place between South African 5th Division and the 21st Panzer Division near City Rizeg, with large losses on both sides. They are going at each other um, pretty badly. In the Atlantic, okay, the HMS Devonshire sinks the German raid Atlantis um, in the South Atlantic. In North Africa, engagements between the British and German forces take place in the whole of the area uh, between um, Bia El Gubi um, and City Rizeg. So with consent, okay, at Dutch government in exile in London, the US forces occupy uh, Suriname, okay, which is Dutch Guyana, to protect the strategically vital um, mines in that area. On November 24th, okay, German forces in Libya receive air reinforcements, and General Orkinlek, okay, arrives um, at Libyan battle headquarters. Now, off Solemn, okay, the German submarine U331, commanded um, by um, Lieutenant um, von Tiersenhausen, okay, sinks the British battleship Barnum with four torpedoes, costing 868 British lives. The, top, the U boats have come into the Mediterranean, they are already raising havoc. In Pacific, okay, American ships off Formosa, Taiwan, sight a Japanese military convoy, presumably en route for Malaya, okay, when on November 25th, so the Japanese are also preparing. So basically, uh, November 26th, Major General Ritchie replaces General Cunningham in Commander 8th Armour in the absolute robbing go round that went on uh, during the time. Now, in Washington, the Americans put before Kurusu, the emissary from Tokyo, the requirements to solve their crisis. Now, the American state to the Japanese, they have to um, abandon um, the territory they occupy in China and Indochina um, and enter recognition of the Nanking government and withdrawal from the alliance with the Axis powers, Germany and Italy. Now, clearly, these demands cannot be met, uh, but in any case, Japanese fleet has already in complete secrecy left its home ports to concentrate at the points laid down in the Imperial staff's plan so the Japanese fleet has already sailed and I think the Americans had forewarning of it now Admiral H.R. Stark chief of naval operations in US Supreme Command sends a warning of state of war to the commanders of the American Asian and Pacific fleets you see that is another kind of symbol there that the you know some American military personnel denied any knowledge of Pearl Harbor but yet the day after the day or two after the Japanese fleet leaves Japanese waters you know the Americans are putting all their um, fleet commanders in Pacific on a war footing. Why is that? Japan has made no aggressive moves towards America. So General um, General Nasi, okay, commanding Italian garrison of Gondor, asked the British um, for armistice terms in Italy and East Africa. They have taken a kicking in Italy and East Africa since the start of um, operations. Now, on the following day, November 29th, the remaining Italians in Gondor lay down their arms and Italy and East Africa 
no longer officially exists. Okay. Meanwhile, on November 30th, a bit of a milestone, Malta has its 1,000th um, air raid alert. <laughs> Dear me. Now, Japanese Prime Minister Tojo predictably rejects the American demands for solution of the crisis between the two countries. And Japanese fleet is reported from British North Borneo as moving southwards. Off the Australian coast, okay, German pirate ship Cormoran, okay, sinks the Australian cruiser Sydney, and a state of emergency is declared in Malaya a number of days before the Pearl Harbor attack. So the moves and counter moves are going on, okay, are going on. In North Africa, Rommel launches a final abortive attack against Tobruk, um, you know, on the following uh, moves. Um, you know, we will continue resolution there into 1942. But meanwhile, Great Britain declares war on Finland, Hungary and Romania. And Japan tells America that movements of Japanese troops in Indochina are purely precautionary. OK, um, and on the eve of December 7th, 1941, President Roosevelt appeals directly to the Emperor of Japan for peace. That is December 6th, 1941. Coming next, a very special part, the attack on Pearl Harbor. I'm out.